Welcome back. I'm Chris Baseford here at my studio, Lucky Dog Sound. There's the lucky dog in his spot, enjoying the peace and quiet. Beautiful, sunny Los Angeles, California. Okay. I hope, 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 hope you guys are getting something out of these videos because um, I love sharing these little quick basic things with you guys. I've been sharing some of these tips with my friends and colleagues and clients you know, that, that use Pro Tools and for years. And I always love seeing how they take them and run with them and get faster. And the, the more efficient you can get with your workflow and the more comfortable you can be with the technology and it become more instinctual and you can work faster and this doesn't get in your way, the more creative you can be. And that's ultimately what I try to facilitate with my clients when I'm working with them is take the technical part out of the equation for them. But if they're going to run their rig or they're doing, you know, writing or pre-production on their own, that type of thing, ultimately, I would like to help them get to a point where they can be as creative as possible and this stuff doesn't get in the way. So one of the reasons why I'm, I, I want to share this with you guys is because of that, because ultimately, you know, I love hearing great music. I love hearing people make great music and, and this stuff can be a burden when it gets in your way. So anyways, hope that you guys have been digging these videos. I'm going to keep knocking them out uh, as, as much as I can. Uh, obviously I still make records for a living. So it, this is kind of in, in between that type of stuff. So anyways, here we go. Got another video for you. Track freeze function. This is a new ish, uh, a new ish feature in Pro Tools. I can't remember what version it came in. I don't know, maybe a couple versions ago, but uh, it's very underutilized. It can be very powerful, especially if you're on a system where you don't have a ton of power uh, or if you're using tracks with a ton of plugins. And this is something that if you're strategic about how you lay out your plugins, this can be really, really, really cool. And at what point you freeze your plugin, you freeze your tracks versus, you know, doing them all, all at the end, etc. I'm going to show you what this is really quickly, okay? I've got two two tracks here, kick in, kick out, okay? From a live drum session that I was doing. Um, let's go to the mixer page for a second, and I'm just going to quickly, you know what, let's, let's do this on some other tracks just so they're a little easier to see here. Let's, let's do them on the room tracks. Okay, so let's go to the room tracks here, okay? Cool. So I've got a room close, room mid, room far. This doesn't matter what you, you can use this. This track freezes for any track. This does not doesn't pertain to drums only or whatever. I'm just using it because this is this is one of the re, this is one of the uses I actually use it a lot for. Okay, and it doesn't matter. I'm not going to play any audio for you. I'm just going to show you what this is. Okay, so I'm going to load this up with a couple plugins here. Something that's slightly resource intensive. Maybe things that add. A little bit of delay like latency to the session etc etc okay so i'm going to use the uad stuff i'm going to put a, a tape simulator on this uh where are you baby there you are okay so now this is a stereo track so now i've got pretty much the equivalent of two instances of a studer 800 i'm going to duplicate that over to that other track duplicate that over cool okay so now actually you know what let's do this for a second I'm going to pop this window open for you. And, oh, that's right. It's UAD. It doesn't show up there. doesn't matter. Keep them moving forward. Okay. So I've got a tape simulator. I've got a channel strip. Okay. Let's say I do a bunch of EQ moves, a bunch of compression, whatever. Now I want to add some more stuff. I'm going to add a compressor to this. Okay, why don't we do, uh, let's put a Fairchild on that one. Let's put uh, one of my favorite drum compressors. Thank you, David Bendith and Boz Labs here. Uh, okay, we'll do, oh, let's do, let's do another resource hog sounds great just eats up so much okay 
So let's say I've got those room mics now sounding great. I'm like, cool. But now my system starts running slow or I've added a bunch of, you know, uh, uh, delay compensation to my session. I want to punch in a track. Now I've got some latency or, you know, whatever the scenario is that, you know, you just want to free up some resources. In the old days, in the old days, <laughs> pre-track freeze, what we would do is we would print this stuff onto new tracks so that way we're capturing our plugins and i'd make three new tracks three new tracks and i would route the output of these three tracks into the input of these three tracks i would name them the same thing but you know you know maybe i'd name it you know room close effects you know with effects or something like that uh, or uh, print or render or whatever. Everybody had their own thing, right? But it was basically to indicate that I had printed some stuff on this and that I would make these tracks inactive and hide them so that at any point in time I could come back. Let's say it's going out to the mixer. Let's say I want to change something now that the song's evolved. I need less compression, more compression, more EQ, less EQ, whatever. It was a pain in the ass, okay? Now, what you can do is something called track. <laughs> Tracks frozen. Okay, see how they're kind of grayed out like this? They kind of have like a, a diagonal line through them. Cool. And you're like, okay, now now I, I, I've i got, and these plugins get grayed out, okay? And also this little snowflake here lights up. So that way it's all indicating that you've got some, tr some frozen track stuff and you've got the snowflake next to the plugins. Here's the coolest thing about this, okay? I can add plugins after this and keep working. I don't have to unfreeze them to do anything. Okay. I can change the volume. I can change the pans. Okay. I can keep working, but all I've done is kind of temporarily rendered these really resource intensive plugins. Okay. Now let's say you love the sound of all this stuff. Okay. And you're like, this is great. But now you want to just tweak, tweak that initial tape saturation plugin. Oh, hang on, let me go to the other page here. Sorry. Okay. You can unfreeze this now. Okay. And now you've gone, you've added a couple extra things, you've done your stuff, and now you've you can unfreeze it, go in and just make that slight adjustment. And you're not you're not stuck. Now, I like committing to stuff, but some stuff you're not ready to commit to, but you want to free up some resources. This track freeze function is huge, huge. So keep keep that in mind when you're, you know, one of the things that I do, here's a quick, this tape simulator is a perfect example, okay? If I've done a whole session of drums, what I might do is, I'm just going to get rid of all this stuff. Tape simulator is one of those things that at first I might want, and then as a session session progresses, as a song progresses, as the mix progresses, I might want to change, or I might want to get rid of altogether, but maybe at first I want it there, okay? A lot of the tape simulator plugins are resource intensive, okay? So here's another one that I, I really like to use, okay? I'll put this on all of my tracks, on all of my all of my uh, uh, drum tracks, okay? Come on, baby. There we go. Without any other plugins, and I'll put it in the first slot. Now, what I'll do is I'll freeze all of these, and then once those are frozen, then I'll add my channel strips and start mixing. Now, if any point in time I want to unfreeze and tweak the tape setting, if I want, instead of printing it and being stuck with it, let's say I want to get rid of it, let's say the mix just kind of starts becoming too soft, I want some of those transients back, I can do that. I'm not stuck. Track freeze, huge. 
try to incorporate that in your workflow. You're going to make your system run a lot smoother. And I, I, I have to remind myself of this all the time. So use it. Dozer uses it. You should use it too. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. Hit the like button, subscribe, ask questions, comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.